Hi everybody, today we're making orzo con grandules. I have no idea how to pronounce it. Grandules. Grandules, see? It's always good to have somebody else in here. So, it is Puerto Rican rice with pigeon peas. And our recipe, that was your homework for last night, so hopefully you read it all. And here we have our mise en place. What is mise en place? It means, it's in French. Kitchen terminology is usually in French. Mise, put, uh, in, place, place, put in place. Mise en place means put everything in place. So here we have our ingredients and our tools. So part of your homework every night is to read the actual instructions for the recipe. And for level one, you highlight the tools. So right here, heat your caldero or large pot. Caldero is what um, people use in Puerto Rico to cook their rice or a large pot. So those two are tools. We would highlight those, wooden spoon. And if you look over here, you see I have all of our tools already put out. We have our cutting board, our can opener, wooden spoon, paring knife, strainer, non-slip mat, measuring spoons. I already have measuring cups for the rice, two cups of rice, and our recito. This is the one that we just made, and that's a third of a cup. We have our bowls, and if you don't have a non-slip mat, you can just use a rag, make it wet, put it underneath your cutting board. And if you look over here, we should have everything in our recipe. We have our olive oil, we have the pigeon peas, we have the sazon, our Spanish onion, cilantro, tomato paste. Now, one thing that if you look at the recipe, you see that we have for the ingredients, pimento stuffed olives or two tablespoons of alcaparado, which is a combination of pimento stuffed olives and capers. So I did not get that ingredient, but if you notice right here, I have capers and I have the olives. So I'm just gonna mix the two together and make, you know, so if it's a half cup, then we'll just mix them together to get that amount and use that. Another thing, I don't have the actual uh, Italian seasoning, so what can I do? I'm gonna mix oregano and basil. That's the base of most Italian seasoning, and I'm gonna mix those. One thing, unfortunately, I do not have, though, are the bay leaves. I thought we had them in the cupboard, and unfortunately, we do not, so I don't have them. If you are making this at home, make sure you put the bay leaves in. Make sure you get those, but you know, sometimes you forget things, and you have to substitute other things for it, or sometimes you may not even be able to use it. So now, if you remember, here is our supermarket circular. I went to Key Food, I checked out the circular to find out what was for sale, and lucky enough, the Sazon Gaia seasoning was on sale. So I saved some money looking in the circular and then buying what was on sale. Here is our cilantro also on sale for 99 cents. So a little bit of savings. And I'm sure you all remember the supermarket circular. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is get everything ready. We're gonna open the cans and strain the beans. I'm gonna cut up my onions. I'm gonna cut my cilantro. And then we're gonna start making the recipe. So just hold on a second. So everybody, we have our ingredients. Now I've already chopped the onions and I have cut up the cilantro. So that way we're ready to go. And we have our pigeon peas, which I'm gonna open with our can opener, and then I'm gonna strain with the strainer. Now the important thing is, is that when you open up the can of beans, you wanna rinse them. You wanna rinse away the packing liquid that it comes in. And this will give a better taste, I find, to whatever you're making without that liquid. Um, so, as you can see, here we go, those are our pigeon peas. And we've got to recycle that, so I'm going to wash it and then put it in the recycling bin. I'll take care of that later. For now, I'm rinsing out those peas. All right, running cold water and just rinse them. So, there we go. We're going to let those sit right here on our cutting board. And the first thing that we're going to do, we are going to heat our pot over medium heat and then add the olive oil. So here is our pot. We're gonna turn on the heat. Set it to medium. You wanna get it a little bit warm before you add the olive oil. And then we're gonna start by sauteing our onions, okay? So, how much olive oil do we need? I believe it's a tablespoon. 
Yes, one tablespoon. So here are our measuring spoons. The tablespoon is the biggest one, orange. Teaspoon, half teaspoon, quarter teaspoon. This is the tablespoon. We're going to measure one tablespoon of olive oil into our pot. All right? It's gotten warm, I can tell. I'm just going to pour that right in. And now I'm done with the olive oil. We're going to let the olive oil warm up. I'm going to tilt the pan to coat the bottom. And then we're going to add the onions to saute. Get every little bit in, and you can hear that they're sizzling. All right, and we're going to saute them until they're tender. You want to come in and see what's going on in our pot? Here we go, we've got them. The onions in here, we're stirring that up. So we're going to keep stirring that, warm them up, and then we're going to add our next thing, which is our aceito. Probably did it wrong again. But anyhow, this is our third cup. This is what we just made. The ingredients in here was garlic, olive, cilantro, green bell pepper, red bell pepper, and a little bit of water. And this is the flavor base of Puerto Rican cuisine and a lot of Caribbean Spanish cuisine. So frito is the same thing, but with tomato paste. This one, we don't have any. So we're gonna heat this up too. So I'm gonna pour that in. All right, and then we're gonna stir it all together. And we're gonna saute that until our onions get nice and tender. And a lot of the excess liquid is gonna evaporate. You can smell how wonderful that is. All right, so we're gonna do that and we're gonna stir it for about four minutes. Then we're gonna add our sazon and our bouillon. All right, so, and our chicken, our uh, tomato paste. So, this is gonna take a couple of minutes, so we're gonna stop right now and then come back, okay? Okay. All right, so as you can see, if you look into our pot, all that excess liquid has gone, our onions are now tender, and it smells fabulous. So what are we gonna do now? We are going to add our chicken bouillon cube, just plop it right in our sazon seasoning, which is the cilantro um, acheote as well. So that's the type of sazon flavoring we have, which is, if you can see, look at that, bright, like almost like a pink orange. That looks cool. So that's gonna add a lot of flavor, I am sure. I smell it already. And we're going to add our tomato paste, and we need Let's double check. Two tablespoons of tomato paste, okay? So we've got our tablespoon measure. We're gonna measure it in. We got one, two. I know you're all probably saying I didn't level it off. It's okay. We are doing two heaping tablespoons of the tomato paste, okay? So now my pot's getting a little bit hot. I'm gonna take it off the heat. I don't want it to burn. But now, this was green, and now it's a beautiful orange, red, and it smells really fantastic. So let's double check. What is my next step? We're gonna add the Peas, Italian seasonings, the water, and the cilantro, olives. We're gonna bring it to a boil, and then we're gonna add the rice. So, let's add our peas, okay? And again, if you notice, I took it off the heat. We're gonna add our capers and olives with pimentos. I'm gonna stir that all together. And now that the pan is cooled down, hopefully it won't be burning anything. It looks fantastic. You can see that. And it smells great too. So unfortunately you don't get to smell it. All right, and let me double check. We're gonna measure our Italian seasonings. Remember we didn't have that, so we're substituting 
We're making our own batch of Italian seasoning. So it's one teaspoon of Italian seasoning. If you don't have it and you have oregano and basil, we're gonna do a half teaspoon each. So I'm gonna add a half teaspoon of oregano and a half teaspoon of basil, all right? A lot of times when you're making stuff, you may not have all the ingredients, you don't have time to run out, so you need to know what you can substitute. All right, and you can simply Google things too. You can Google substitution for Italian seasoning and they will tell you. So if you're not sure, Google it. All right, and we've added our seasoning. Sorry, I'm gonna close. And now we're gonna add the cilantro. I love cilantro. I'm sure this is going to give it a great flavor. We only need half a bunch, but what we're going to do with the rest of it is use that as a garnish. So when you're serving your family, it, you put this on top. So if you put it in a bowl, add some of the fresh cilantro as a garnish on the top. It makes it extra special. It looks beautiful that way. All right, so we're sauteing all of these ingredients together. And then we are going to add our three cups of water. The three cups of water we're going to bring to a boil. Then we're going to add our rice. Boil that until the rice is fluffy and tender. So now we've got all these ingredients in here. We're going to scrape the bottom of the pan to get everything off the bottom of the pan. Bring it to a boil. When I put the rice in, because it's such a large pot, I don't, I don't think I have a cover. I'll see if I have a cover. If I don't have a cover, We'll just put tin foil over it, okay? So um, while I'm finding the cover and getting tin foil ready, we're gonna let this come to a boil, so come back, and I'll show you what it looks like when we have the rice and then when we cook it, okay? Thank you. So here we go. It's boiling, and now I'm gonna turn it down to low, and we're gonna add the rice. We're gonna stir in the rice, and then we're gonna cover it again and let it cook until it's nice and fluffy which should be about maybe 20 minutes, 25 minutes. I'll check it. All right, and then we'll have our beautiful finished dish, which I'm sure is gonna be absolutely delicious with all these wonderful flavors. And this is a traditional dish from Puerto Rico. Um, and it's something that people use a lot, especially for Christmas and holidays. And families have their own recipes and their own special pot to cook it in, caldero. And so this is something that, ouch, that's hot. <laughs> something that's gonna be enjoyed for generations in each family. And so hopefully now maybe you'll enjoy it too and make some for yourself. So we'll come back in a little while and check it out and see how it looks in a beautiful plate. Thank you. Okay, the rice has been in the um, <clears throat> pot boiling on a low simmer for, 25 minutes now, and let's see if it looks like it's done. We're gonna take a fork, fork it up, and see if it looks like it's nice fork tender. And this does look beautiful. Look at that. All right, so it smells fantastic. It looks beautiful. I've got a bowl here. Let's put a, a nice portion in our bowl. And now this would go great with chicken, pork, fish by itself. So here we go, a new, good sized portion. And like I said, we're gonna put some of the fresh cilantro on top as a garnish. And there we go, let's see. Nice little piece. Oh, a beautiful garnish. And this beautiful dish is our orzo con gandules, Puerto Rican rice with pigeon peas. And we're making this this month for our book, When I Was Puerto Rican by Esmeralda Santiago. And I hope you've enjoyed watching this demonstration and it makes you want to make it at home. And I hope you guys, if you do make it at home, you'll love it. Thank you for being with me. Take care, everybody. Bye.